Good morning, TTM family. Welcome back to another video. Today we are having a sit down, as you can see, because we're here to talk about my culture shock as a Kenyan <laughs> traveling in um in Nigeria. So I also did my culture shocks in Ghana, but I did that when I was in Nigeria, and I thought that's not really a good idea doing your culture shocks when you've already left the country because. Maybe you forget some things, uh, maybe you, um, what is it called, the experience is not so fresh, so you can't really like talk about it. Uh, in a, a fresh manner, <laughs> in a fresh manner, <clears throat> I don't know what the right word to use for this instance, but yeah, basically I decided to do the one about Nigeria while I'm still here. So I've been in Nigeria for... Mm, two weeks and a half i'd say around two weeks and a half thereabouts thereabouts and uh yeah because today is sunday and i came here the other wednesday so yeah two weeks and a, and a half thereabouts so yeah i decided to let you know how my experience has been so far so far so good uh, to be honest much much better than i expected it to be so that's a win of course in every journey there's ups and downs up and downs and uh first of all disclaimer this video is not meant to uh, insult anybody it's not meant to make anybody feel bad um i noticed that some, there's a lot of nigerians who feel like i'm very negative about nigeria and uh, uh they referred me to some of the other content creators especially kenyan and kenyan female travelers who've been here and uh, uh, they made some good videos about nigeria and whatnot and whatnot and uh, i want to say that everybody's experience is not the same so i am not them they are not me this is my experience i am talking about my experience i cannot talk about their experience because i wasn't here with them you know and uh I have not in any instant gone out of my way to create a situation that will be negative so I can make a negative video. I don't know why people seem to think that's the case. Everything I've shared, you guys can see progressively. It's like happening while I'm traveling. So it's really part of what I'm experiencing. So I don't understand why so many people um, don't like <laughs> What I've been sharing, of course, eh? there's a plastic bag here. Let me remove it out of view. Okay, much better. Of course, we don't like, we're patriots, myself included. We don't like it when people are talking negatively about our countries. Me included when people are talking negatively about Kenya. But I want to say my intention is not to talk negatively about Nigeria. I have said so many good things about Nigeria and so many positive experiences that I've had here. But somehow some people choose to pick only the negatives and focus on the negatives. And it's like they want me to package <clears throat> my trip in a picture perfect way and not talk about all my experience, the holistic experience. And to me, this is not genuine. I am going to share the good, the ugly, uh, the bad, the in-betweens, everything. So if you guys want to have to come to Nigeria, you can have a holistic um view but then again this is not to say that when you come to nigeria this will be your experience because everybody's trip is different so this is my experience not taking out anything away from nigeria not adding anything away from nigeria because i'm just a single person what can i do but yeah so that aside let's dive right into it so number one let me talk about a uh, what shocked this is a culture shock video so let me talk about what shocked me the most about uh, nigeria when i first got here it's um that okay i already knew this but i didn't understand now that i've been to lagos and abuja i already knew but i didn't understand how the two work because abuja is the capital city of the country but lagos is a commercial city is the economic hub of the city so of the country sorry but for us Nairobi is the capital, it's the commercial hub, it's 
the seat of government it's everything so when i first got here that was a little bit i knew like abuja was the capital but for some reason i expected everything to still be based in in lagos you know like um for example the white white house or president's house whatever they call it here back home we call it state house but here it's uh based in he has a house a residential house in uh in the island i saw it in Ireland, Lagos Island, I saw it, but I don't know if he has a presidential office in Lagos, but the main, it's called Aso Rock, Aso Rock Villa, or Aso Villa, uh, that is a presidential state house or white house, it's here in Abuja, so yeah, that was a little bit confusing for me, because Lagos gives me sort of a New York vibe that when you talk about the states, everybody knows New York, but nobody thinks of Washington, D.C. So when you talk about Nigeria, everybody thinks Lagos, but nobody thinks of Abuja. So yeah, so that was a little bit confusing for me that you have, this is a capital and this is the economic hub. Whereas for me, I'm used to like, this is the capital, this is the economic hub, this is basically everything not to say we don't have more cities in uh, in kenya we do but um nairobi happens to be the seat of government the capital and everything in between so yeah that was a little bit um shocking for me and i saw a lot of buildings in lagos where because the lagos was once the capital but it was moved to it was moved to abuja so i saw a lot of buildings where the government offices used to be but now they're abandoned like nothing is happening there like where was the central central bank of nigeria where it was and it moved to abuja there's nothing happening there if you watched my video where i went to the mosque the central bank was the right across the one i was asking is this a hotel it's the central bank of nigeria people let me let me know down in the comment section they told me that and the older one is in lagos is abandoned and there's a lot of i was like what why are there so many abandoned buildings turns out it's where the government offices were before they moved to abuja but nobody took it over which was a little bit strange for me because this is prime real estate so if it was like renovated a little bit it would be like you know it would fetch some money for maybe the lagos government or something like that so that was a little bit confusing for me point number two which was also a culture shock for me in ghana is <laughs> still a culture shock for me here is the weather guys that came to west africa during the rainy season so for us, the rainy season is cold. Du, du, du. Cold. Du, 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 du. You can't leave your house without a jacket. And this is uh, something very funny when people talk about, oh, you're from Africa. <laughs> and Africa is hot. And uh, how are you feeling hot here? Da, 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 da. Hey, hey. Nay, nay. Not all Africa is made the same, okay? <laughs> Nairobi can get a little bit cold. It can, actually, Kenya, not even Nairobi except Mombasa maybe, except the coastal areas, they can get a little bit cold during uh, the wet season and also at night in the evenings, like when you're leaving your house during the day, if you're not coming back during the day, you have to bring your jacket with you because it will get too cold in the evening. But here, even if it's raining, it's still warm, it's still hot, so you don't really need a jacket or you don't really need a sweater unless it's to protect yourself from the rain, but it's not to protect yourself from the cold. And uh, I've seen many Kenyans telling me when I'm talking about, oh, the weather is raining, da, 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 they always tell me, bring your, bring your sweater with you, bring your jacket with you. Why are you dressed like it's the summer and it's raining and whatnot? And I'm like, fam, <laughs> this is not Kenya. <laughs> this is not Kenya where it's like cold, cold. Here it's warm, even, even when it's raining, it's still warm. What I need is an umbrella or... Um, raincoat it's not a sweater and it's not a jacket even at night i can go out like this because uh, it's not cold it's like if you've been to mombasa then you know what i'm talking about um you don't you really don't need a sweater there whether it's daytime or evening you don't really need a sweater and to be honest i don't mind not having a sweater with me <laughs> i enjoy that uh, but i am lucky that i came during the rainy season so it's a little bit cool i hear during the dry season it can be hot 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 and i did experience that in, in ghana in kumasi so i i'm lucky that i really came during the cold season so because i don't like the hot and humid weather it can get a little bit too much yeah so that was one of the shocks here that 
since I got here, I really haven't needed my, I haven't re need, really needed my sweater. I have a sweater, but uh, it's always folded away. Thing I'm going to talk about is the okay, so population. So, Lagos is the most populous country in Africa, city in Africa, not country. It's the most populous city in Africa, which then leads to a lot of congestion and even human traffic. So if you go like to markets, for example, you have to squeeze yourself amongst people because there is people around you constantly. Constantly there's people around you. Safe to say it's not like that in Abuja. Abuja is more uh, spacious less less uh, densely populated so you have a lot more personal space here but in lagos it wasn't the same it was very 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 squeezed so much traffic so much uh, uh what's it called human traffic car traffic like it was always hooting this is linked to the number of people there and they they want to move very fast and everything so it was like beep, 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 beep. and you're all trying to pass and you're squeezing and everything and oh my god where's the pers personal space which is understandable when you have such a huge population so, so yeah a little bit a little bit a little bit of a shocker for me um coming to a, from a place where it's not as densely populated as here then number three is uh, the bad rap so what do i mean by the bad rap i mean that lagos Nigeria as a whole gets a lot of bad rap that like everybody says Nigeria is so dangerous uh, People will try to scam you every left right and center people will try to kidnap you left right and center People will try to do this people will try to do that and all those will try to do this is not There's no positive in it. It's not like people will try to help you people will try to do this. No, 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 it's all negatives To be honest my experience has been very different from all this bad rap because of all these cautions that you're given you tend to be very guarded you put your wall around yourself you don't even want to interact with people right but uh, when i got here my experience has been very different i've mostly met majorly i've met people who have interacted with one-on-one -on -one. they've been very nice especially when the man that i'm not from here they've been more accommodating they've been willing to talk to me <clears throat> willing to help me willing to you know i have had the only incidents i can say it's a bad incident is only the market one um if you guys watch my 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 we got almost got arrested video in abuja then you know what i'm talking about that majorly has been my only bad experience here i can say that without fear of contradiction <laughs> But all the other experiences that I've gotten here, people have generally been good to me. People have, um, yeah, from from the people I've um, um, what is interacted with on my videos, you can see that they've been very nice. And it's sad to say that Nigeria also gets bad rap from Nigerians. I have said even in some videos that, oh, I was told not to do this, this is... And I'm getting hate for it, but it is Nigerians who told me not to do this. I'll give you an example. When I first got here, I went to stay in an area called Oshodi. To be honest, I had no idea like which area you should stay in. So I got a guest house in an area got, called Oshodi. And this area is supposed to be like one of the roughest areas in town. This is in Lagos. It's supposed to be like one of the roughest areas in town. I would compare it to like Eastlands in Kenya. You know, but the bad rap that Eastlands gets, or should he also gets that rap. Um, and uh, the guy at the, the guest house, the receptionist, when I told him, like, I want to go out and explore, or should he market, he was like, no, 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 don't go, don't go by yourself. <laughs> Let me see if I can get someone to stay at the reception for me, and then I'll take you with me, I'll take me with you, so I can, like, guide you and make sure nothing happens to you, and da, da, da. And when I left the guest house, I had, because he couldn't find someone to leave, I, 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 I wanted him to come with me because of how scared he was making me feel. And uh, when I left the guest house, he, he couldn't find someone to leave at the, at the reception, so I, I ended up going by myself. But I was scared. I was having sort of like a panic, panic attack 
I couldn't breathe panic or anxiety attack. I couldn't even breathe. I was like, try and breathe, try and breathe. And then I get to the market and I'm like, huh? This is like being in any other market. It's like being in a market in Nairobi for people in Nairobi, Kikomba, Moturwa, like all these markets. Everybody's minding their own business, buying, selling, doing normal people things in the normal market things, you know. So, yeah, I feel like uh, uh, also Nigerians give Nigeria a bad rap. But, yeah, it's they only want you to be safe. Like, those guys are the, are the, are the guest house. They just want you to be safe. And kept calling me just to find out if I'm okay. Because I went to Oshodi and I went to a random military market. And he kept calling me, are you okay? Do you need everything? Anything? I say, I'm okay. 30 minutes later, one hour later, are you okay? <laughs> It was nice to feel cared for, but at the same time, I felt like it, was, it wasn't that bad. Nigeria isn't as bad as people make it sound or seem, okay? Souvenirs. Souvenirs, guys. So if you watched my most interesting border crossing, me coming from Nigeria to, from Benin to Nigeria, you, then you know what souvenirs are. So basically, is that when I got from the Benin border, to the Nigerian border, it was the most interesting border crossing of my life. How so? <laughs> I, I got a lot of people asking for souvenirs. Basically, they're just corrupt officials, but they don't want to say, give me money. So they just say, give me a souvenir. And it was like, for every single uh service for every single service they needed a souvenir it's like but the funniest thing for me was like nobody came and said like give me money one did actually one asked me i'm not going to say who but he asked me and they ask you now in kenya you know they give money i said what he said, and they ask you in kenya you know they give money i was like Listen, I'm not saying in Kenya is perfect. There's a lot of corruption going on there as well. But it's not in your face like that. It's not like you know they give money. I imagine me going to a government office and they're like, are you going to give me money? I'd be like, hell no. Hell no. I'm not going to give you nothing. But I'm not from here and I, I don't need frustrations. So I was like, um... You know, I have a souvenir. <laughs> I have a little souvenir for you. So, yeah, basically that was the and and also that so we got so many stops along the way from from um from the border of Benin all the way to Lagos. There were so many stops, and I saw like police officers asking for you know souvenirs out in the open, say, I want chop. I want chop means I want to eat. I want chop, like to the driver. And I was like, ah. We have a lot of that. I'm not saying you're perfect, but it's really not in your face. So that for me was like, it was. I was in shock. I was in shock. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, okay, transportation. Transportation for me has been a little bit confusing. So back home we use matatus, which are basically like 14 seater vans, or we have buses, like big buses, 50, 54 seaters. So basically these are the two most common uh, modes of transportation. And we have what you call matatu stages, and they have route numbers. So you, if you're going to this route or route, whatever you wanna call it, there's a number, you know? So when I got to the border, I was like, I want to take a bus to, to Lagos, but there's no buses. There's like small personal cars, which you just get to get into. Like the one I was in was a seven seater. The one I came into, came with, it was a seven seater. I was expecting because it's the border, it's a very busy town. There will be like designated buses to this area of, of, of Lagos, to this area. To this, so you just go get into a bus and go, but it wasn't like that. Uh, it was this seven seater. And to be honest, if you watch that video, those two guys, who 
started talking to me on the Benin side and came with me to the Nigeria side, they really helped me navigate that space. There was no way I was going to be able to find that place by myself. Um, there's a taxi station just right off the off of the border, but uh, I went there to talk to the taxi guy. He asked me for forty thousand naira to take me to Lagos. I will uh, put convert convert the amount and put it there. And as I went, that's a little bit too much to go into Lagos because it wasn't that far. It's like three hours from the border to Lagos. So I was like, ah, that's a little bit too much. So I asked this guy if there's this guy if there's public transportation. And they took me there and I only ended up paying 7k. So those guys, they like, they were like God sent. They were, very, they were, they were two amazing people. They really helped me na navigate the space. So yeah, uh, public transportation has been a little bit uh, difficult to navigate. Also, there is no Buddha Buddhas or Okadas. They used to be there, but they were phased out because there was too many accidents and Buddha Buddhas are like very, very convenient. And also they have KKs. KKs are like tuk-tuks, but they're not allowed everywhere. There's only designated areas where they're allowed. So that also makes it difficult. <clears throat> and uh, I have these small, small, very small uh, buses, which are like seven seater, very small vans, which are like seven seaters, which they don't have a route number. It's the driver who's telling you where you're going. So if you miss what the driver is saying, then you basically miss where you're going or you just miss the you, you miss the, the those buses you miss them so yeah navigating public transportation here has been very difficult because also at home if you want to go long distance like me coming from Lagos to here uh, it would have been very easy because you look for the information online and then you book online or you call the bus company and they direct you how to get there and uh, how to pay and all these things but here i tried calling them so many times nobody was answering the phone and uh, i wasn't sure about the schedule and oh, it was so confusing but i did make it here i did make it here and in abuja the public transportation space is even worse in my experience it's uh, very confusing abuja Given the way it's designed, I feel like we should have much better public transportation, to be honest. They should have buses and very clear routes because it's a very, very well-designed city. The only place that it's failing, according to me, is public transportation. With public tra transportation in check, Abuja is a world-class city. So yeah, drop a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this video so far. And then let's move on to the next point. And let me know if you agree or disagree with my points. Again, I said this is not meant to offend anybody. It's just I'm just sharing my experience of how it's been since the day since when I got here and this far that I've been here. Okay. Then the other thing which everybody talks about and I have to talk about because it is an issue here is generators. Electricity, let's talk about electricity to begin with. Electricity here, like the national national power grid is like really bad, really bad. It keeps going, one minute you have electricity, the next minute it's gone. So there's constant generators everywhere, even here where I'm staying and it's like a really nice estate. You know, on off on off on off and if you watch my 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 market my market video in the market the one we almost got arrested video you will see i showed a shot where there's like plenty of generate generators which now i'm thinking now that the the price of fuel has really gone up it must be really really hard for those business people who depend on electricity to do business you know because if 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 the price of fuel goes up and you, you rely on this generator which relies on fuel in turn it means like your profit margin has to come down which then in turn means like that you you as a business person you don't want your profit margin to come down to come down so much so then you transfer the expense to the consumer to the people who are coming to buy from you so then the brand of uh, fuel going up is felt by everybody especially consumers so yeah it's not a good it's not a good place to be in but uh, yeah but i was talking about electricity i got uh, i digressed but 
yeah generators here have been quite shocking for me for us it's very rare back home it's very very rare to see like someone the generator because people have electricity everybody has electricity it's quite stable and even in the rural areas the previous government had this um, campaign called rural rural electrification <laughs> I'm, I'm from the mount, mountain region of kenya so the r's and the l's sometimes they're ah, a little bit because of a problem sometimes but yeah so the previous government had this project called the rural electrification which they made sure that even the rural areas all have electricity so now basically i would say 80 90 percent of the population has electricity which is like very stable uh, and if they're going to have a power power cut mostly they will notify you in advance that your area will have a power cut for maintenance or something so prepare yourself you know and uh, sometimes when they've cut power without notifications they've gotten sued because it has affected people's businesses or it's when it comes back it comes up with a power surge so it spoils like people's electronics and stuff so they've gotten sued for that so they're a little bit more a little bit more uh, careful with the with the power cuts that's what i want to say but here also from the person i was being hosted by uh, a guy in Lagos said he told me like the cost of electricity from the from the national grid is also so high, which for me was a little bit of a shock. Like he told me how much he spends in a month. It was a lot for electricity, uh, and for us, we have been compl we've been complaining about the price of electricity going up because they added some tax. But he told me he spends about one hundred fifty dollars a month for electricity, and for us it's like twenty dollars a month, and you're still complaining. It's too much. If you're spending $150 a month, it means you have a whole entire building or or you have like a business, like a portion mill or something, you know. For a normal household, it's not normal to spend like that much uh, in, for electricity, you know. So yeah, that was a little bit of a shock. Like, also, in Nigeria, it's the first place where I saw an inverter. I was like, what's, what is this thing? Like, it looked like this big machine in the house. I was like, what is this big machine and what is it doing? It looks like a bomb. <laughs> you know, when you, when you watch action movies and you see them cutting wires for the bomb, the red, cut the green wire, they've been directed, cut the green wire, cut the red wire, cut the... An inverter looked like that to me because I had never in my life seen an inverter. So I was like, what is this bomb thing doing in the house? I'm like, this is an inverter. And uh, yeah it's for electricity and da, 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 da. so yeah that was a little bit of a shock <laughs> a shock for me the inverter thing but yeah the more you travel the more you see new things and the more you learn about how different parts of the world work food so same as uh, ghana so it wasn't that very shocking because the experience is in ghana but it is very spicy it is oily the, the meat when they make uh, like beef stew or something like that's oily it's still the red palm oil i think uh which my stomach does not love at all but i have to say that uh, the the street food so for us we have what they have what they call they call suya which is street food here it comes out mostly at night excuse me and we have nyamachoma basically the same thing it's just that the, the condiments that they use for the suya are different from what to use for nyamachoma but for us i wouldn't say nyamachoma is really a street food it is you go it's mostly a place where you go how do i explain so nyamachoma places are mostly makuti makuti <laughs> what is makuti in english you know thatched roofs they make thatch roofs, very homey, very vibey, very rustic kind of places where you go, you're getting your car washed over there, you're having your beer here, and you're having your nyamachoma, and uh, kachumbari, which is basically salsa, and your ugali, and all that, and you're just chilling. This is, most nyamachoma places are like that. But here, the suya is uh, basically uh, a, a street food, which is, uh, which was like a, a little, uh, a little bit of a shock to me, because I, I didn't know what suya was, so when I saw it was nyamachoma, I was like, oh, this is a nyamachoma. Um, as street food was a little bit shocking to me, but to be honest, I like it this way because then you can buy, you know, just a little piece. Just the other day we bought uh, for 500, just a little piece of um, suya. I like nyamachoma where they have to wear, weigh 
either quarter kg, half a kg, one kg, something like that. But for the suya, you can buy according to the amount of money you have. Mostly 500 going upwards. So about how loud and boisterous people are here. So I've had this joke over and over again that Nigerians are loud because they have to talk over all the noise from the generators. And uh, <laughs> I don't know how true it is. If you're Nigerian, just drop a comment on the comment section below. Let me know if that's why you guys are loud and boisterous. But they are very... Oh, honestly, in Abuja, it's been a little bit different. But in Lagos, I saw that a lot. I saw a lot. Sometimes I didn't know if people were having like normal conversations or they were having an argument because of the tone of their voices, you know? You know, the PG. I'm like, are you having a conversation or are you fighting? And then they do <laughs> that thing. I do that. And I know, aha, this is an argument. Whenever they do it, you know, aha, this is not a normal conversation. This is an argument. And a lot, a lot of the times where I saw this was traffic related. And either in traffic, when another car one gave way and you're trying to get in, there was a lot of that shouting at each other. Uh, there was a lot of uh, hitting the cars. People just hit your cars and like, hey, you're the stupid. <laughs> Something like that, you know. There was a lot of that. <clears throat> so yeah, that was a little bit quite <laughs> interesting for me. How mm, <laughs> I think in general, we East Africans are a little bit more calm people. I don't want to say that we can't be loud. We can be loud when it's called for. But it's not our way of life to be like that loud. You know, but here, Lagos, especially Lagos was like, hmm, especially where, what do I call them? The bus parks or the bus stations where there's a lot of drop off and pick up. I saw a lot of that. Other point that I wanted to talk about is what they call area boys. Area boys. So if you're Nigerian, you know what an area boy is. If you're not Nigerian, sit back. I will tell you what an area boy is. Because even I didn't know what, who or what is an area boy until I got here. So if you watched my video called what they told me about Nigeria, then you know what I'm talking about. So I met these two, two, three guys at the park, Freedom Park, when I was walking around and uh, they told me I, need, I needed to try Nigerian food called Amale, which I, I went to try. It was super delicious. It's been my best food that I ate here. Many people tell me they, they, they have never tried Amale. They wouldn't try it. Amala or Amale, one of the two. But for me, it was like super delicious. To be honest, I really enjoyed the food. I will be eating it again. It was, it was so good. But then they were taking me there and then we were talking and they told me something about area boys. They told me, if uh, the area boys saw you filming, they'd ask you for money. I was like, excuse you? Who's asking me for money for filming? The police, is it illegal? Say no, area boys. I'm like, who are area boys? And they're like, oh, area boys, you know, the boys who, <laughs> I guess you would call them, is cartel the right word? Correct me if I'm um wrong yeah they're just they're just the guys who run the hood or who run the streets and you have to pay them for to do certain things so if i'm walking on the street with my camera vlogging this is a public street it's a free street with a camera that i bought myself i have to give them something to film on the street so I was like, why should I give you something to film on the street? You, the street does not belong to you. You did not buy this camera for me. I am not filming you. <laughs> so how comes I need to give you something? But uh, and they told me that's how it works. If you don't pay them, then they will harass you. Uh, and if you pay them or if you give them something, then they will protect you. Which was like, okay. <laughs> Well, I guess you've been wrong. Luckily enough, I didn't run into any of them. So, and haven't run into any of them so far, which I'm very, I'm very thankful to. But uh, coming back to the transportation point, I did see what I think were area boys. 
uh, whenever the driver would like park the driver of the car would like park somewhere they're not supposed to park there would be these boys with like big sticks who would come big plastic pipes and sticks would come and like hit the car hey they move now move now what you what you do here what you parking here do, 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 do. move now and the first time i saw that i was like what what is going on and then yeah, the driver would just move he would like of course he won't be nice to them and tell her them words they'll throw back well, they'll throw words at each other but then he would have to move because otherwise you are outnumbered you have nothing to say so that for me was a little bit shocking like Huh? Wait, I know that in, in Nairobi there are cartels who run the show, but basically there they are cartels who run big things, you know, like they try to monopolize water supply um, and something like that. And uh, the other thing that I want to talk about is uh, the value of money. So the Naira, which is a national currency of um, Nigeria is not doing so well against the dollar, the dollar, but which currency is even the Kenya shilling is like doing really, really badly. But then the biggest denomination here is 1000 Naira. But then you really can't buy much with this 1000 Naira. So if you have 1000 Kenya shillings, you can go to a supermarket and come out with, you know, some shopping. But here, 1000, it's like you can't buy bananas. You can buy a bunch of bananas and a bunch of avocados for it. It's, it's basically uh, not that much money. So that then becomes very frustrating when you are visiting. If you're living here, it's okay for you because you have what is called the bank transfer system. That's what people use here. Back home, we have uh, M-Pesa, which is mobile money transfer, which is very widely used and or cash so you can use mpesa or cash because the cash is valuable so you don't need to carry so much of it to buy a couple of things but because here yeah, the cash is not the the cash is not that valuable you need to carry a lot of it to pay for a small thing so say for example i want to pay for the place where i'm staying i need to go to the bank and withdraw 25 notes 22 20 over 20k notes to come and pay for one night and uh, if you are a local and you can do bank transfer this becomes easy but when you're a foreigner your card your international card is limited to how much money you can withdraw at the bank so at the ATM first of all the POS system that the little POS they have everywhere those ones they don't work for international cards uh, it, it can only work in an ATM so you go we you withdraw this a cutoff some banks are 20, others are 40, 1,000. <laughs> and every transaction, you can only withdraw 10,000. And in every transaction of 10,000, there's an exorbitant amount of fees that you charge. I would ne For me to pay the amount of fees that I'm paying for one transaction here, it would have to be such a huge amount of money that I'm transacting with back home to pay the same exact amount of fees. But for here, it's just 10,000. You need to withdraw. And you pay an exorbitant amount of money but for you to pay for your your hotel and your food and your transport for a day then you need to withdraw and withdraw and withdraw and withdraw which in turns you have a, you have a pile of money which in turn you have a pile of fees to pay which in turn becomes like very frustrating if you're visiting uh, so if you're traveling to Nigeria, please, if you don't take anything else from this video, please, 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 let your takeaway be come with dollars. Bring your dollars. You are going to need them. You are going to need your dollars because mobile money is not a thing here. If you're traveling to Kenya, you just go at the airport, you get yourself a safari card, SIM card, airtel, SIM card, whatever SIM card. Then you go to the ATM, you withdraw whatever amount of money because there is no that cutoff. And then you put it in your mobile money and then you're free to transact everywhere accommodation so i i think that i've said a couple of times that nigeria really is not tailored for tourism i feel like tourism is not taken that seriously here and uh, in that case they have no facilities for tourists in that accommodation you you will find 
Airbnbs. Um, and there is nothing like hostels. I have tried looking for hostels. I like staying in hostels because I'm a solo traveler. So in hostels, it's easier to socialize. It's easier to meet your tribe. So other solo travelers, <clears throat> it's easier to do things together. But uh, here, because there is no, it's not tailored for tourists, there is no hostels are non-existent. I haven't been able to find one. And if you know one, and if you're local and you know one, let me know where it is because I haven't able been able to find one. And so it, that leaves you with Airbnbs or hotels, which are like quite very highly priced if you're a budget traveler. I feel like if you went to Kenya with the, on a budget, it would be easier for you to travel over there because everything is so much cheaper. Because it's a touristy place, they have catered for all kinds of tourists. If you're high end, you can pay $10,000 a night for, for a hotel. There's options for you. If you're 50, if you're uh, $5,000 a night, there's something for you. If you're $100 a night, there's something for you. If you're $10 a night, there's something for you. So I feel like here, it's not that way. It's not. Majority of the people who are traveling here, they're traveling for business. I think to, to go with that is things to do. Think touristy things to do. There's not a lot of touristy things to do, which is then tied to the fact that there's not a, this place is not very conducive for tourism. Um, in Nairobi, you'll take you go to Karura Forest, take a bike and ride it in the in the forest. You can go to Nairobi National Park for a game drive. You can there's options, but here maybe because I'm new and I don't know like where to go or what to do, I haven't found that that many things to do. Um, so if you're Nigerian, drop a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know what are like the touristy things to do. Have I missed something or is your country just not tailored uh, for tourism? Even domestic tourism, you know. We are very big, in Kenya, we're very big on international tourism and domestic tourism as well. Um, weekend road trips are a thing. On uh, Friday after work, People get into their car, drive off to Naivasha, drive off to Nanyuki, drive off to Akuru. These are different towns. For the weekend, you drive off on Friday and then you come back on Sunday evening to go back to Monday or for work because everything is so accessible, you know. You don't have to worry about driving from point A to point B. Even at night, you can drive. The, everything is much more accessible, safe and everything. But here, I don't know if it's because I don't have friends or I don't know where to look. I haven't found that to be the case so yeah basically those are my my not anybody else's so i don't want to hear people in the comment section saying oh but so and so came they didn't have this experience oh but so and so no i'm not so and so i am the traveling miss this is my experience there is no me there in no way meant to offend you and yeah if you come to nairobi if you ever come to nairobi feel free to share what your experiences are if they're true i will accept um i might counter you but i will not try to deny that you they are your own experiences you are free to share what you have experienced the good the bad the ugly and everything in between so thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being with me uh, i hope you got um a little bit of a feel of how my journey has been so far from this video thank you for everyone who supports my video by liking commenting sharing I really appreciate you uh, some people have sent me money on people I want to say thank you to you very for that very very much <laughs> premier guy I love you so much <laughs> thank you for always being there to support me thank you for, for, so much for always showing me love and I will see you guys in the next one sending you love and light I'm out bye